Hi everyone, in this video I want to walk you through a change in equilibrium in the loanable funds model. And the example I'm going to use is an increase in government spending. Okay, now, so this is increased spending on roads and bridges, military, let's say there's a war and so government expending increases. But everything else we can possibly imagine that influences any of these curves is held constant. Alright, so the first task is you have to figure out which curve the increase in government spending is going to affect. Well, you've got two cho choices. It's either the supply curve or the demand curve. Now, if you go back to the thought experiments we used when we derived each of the curves, the answer will become a little bit clearer to you. Remember that the demand curve was re really driven by the desire of firms to go ahead and invest because we assumed firms had to first borrow before they could invest. So anything that led firms to want to invest more caused the demand curve to change. Okay? Or, excuse me, the demand curve to shift to the right. And anything that caused firms to want to invest less will cause the demand curve to shift to the left. The supply curve was driven by national savings. Right? Anything that increased national savings shifted the supply of loanable funds to the right. Anything which decreased national savings shifted the um, supply of loanable funds to the left. Now you might remember that national savings, when you went through and all you did all of the uh, accounting, you came up with national savings is equal to income, real GDP, minus consumption, minus government spending. So if we assume income's constant, we assume consumption's constant, then if you increase government spending due to a war, then mathematically there's no way around it, there's a decrease in national savings. That means the supply curve here for loanable funds has got to reflect a decrease in the quantity supplied of loanable funds. So if this is our initial supply curve, we know the supply curve has got to shift to the left. And we'll call it here S2. All right, now let me erase some stuff. And you can just remember this is all for an increase in government spending. All right? So we started off in our initial equilibrium point A. Okay? And then we had a change. So we had the initial equilibrium, equilibrium, and then we had the change. And the change here was an increase in government spending. Okay? That caused the supply curve shifts left. All right. Now I want to ask you something. At the initial real interest rate, R1, so let's just go ahead and pretend for the sake of argument that real interest rates don't adjust quickly, they adjust slowly over time. So let's say initially the real interest rate stays the same at R2. Well, if that's the case, then the question is going to be, what happens in this market? Well, if the supply curve shifts to the left and we assume the real interest rate stays at R2, then at R2, we want to find out whether there's a shortage or a surplus, which means we need to find the new quantity supplied of loanable funds and we need to find the new quantity demanded of loanable funds. So let's go ahead and find quantity demanded first. So if we go from R2 all the way over to the demand curve, we end up at point A and we go down and we see, oh, the quantity demand of loanable funds hasn't changed. So at R2 we've got this, quantity demand 2. Now we need to find quantity supplied 2. So we go from R2 all the way over to the new supply curve. In fact, if you wanted to, you could go ahead and label that point B if you want. And then down quantity supplied to. Now the reason why I'm going to call that, um, or the reason that's the, uh, the new quantity supply of loanable funds is because, remember, this is loanable funds available to the private sector. If the government is spending more, then it's using more of the uh, loanable funds out there or supplying less. Either way, there are fewer loanable funds available to the private sector. So the quantity supplied of loanable funds has decreased and the supply curve has shifted to the left, like we drew up here. All right. So if that's the um, if that's quantity supplied, then quantity demand for loanable funds exceeds quantity supplied. Now we have to ask ourselves: This is not an equilibrium. So what's going to happen? How is this market going to adjust? And that is um, what was the point of the the previous vi video where I showed the stability of equilibrium, right?
we showed how markets respond when there's a shortage or a surplus in the market. And here, we're just going to say market adjusts. So the third thing we have to understand is how markets adjusts. And we know since there's a shortage, since quantity demand to is greater than quantity supply to, we know there's some firm out there with a wonderful investment project who can't get the funding that they want at the current real interest rate. Therefore, that firm has an incentive to bid up the real interest rate. So real interest rates start to rise. As the real interest rate starts to rise, we start moving up along the supply curve of loanable funds, which means now that real interest rates are rising, that's a signal to households that says, you know what, the reward for savings has in is increasing, you should go ahead and do more of it. So those households will go ahead and increase the amount that they save and decrease the amount that they consume. At the same time, so quantity supplied of loanable funds is increasing. Okay, At the same time, the higher real interest rate is sending a signal to firms out there that says, you know what, maybe you had an investment project that was great at the low real interest rate, but now that the real interest rates are going up, those, some of those investment projects are not as valuable as they were before, so you should do less of them. In other words, the quantity demand of loanable funds is going to decrease. So you're going to start moving up along your demand curve. When is all this going to stop? Well, it's going to stop when you reach the new equilibrium. What's the new equilibrium? That's where your new supply curve, S2, intersects your demand curve. I'm going to go ahead and call that point C. So it's when the real interest rate has risen all the way up to R3. And what's so special about R3? Because at R3, if I go from R3 to the demand curve and down, that's going to be, or if I go from R3 to the new supply curve 2 and down, that's going to be quantity supplied 3. And if I go from R3 to the demand curve and down, that's going to be quantity demand 3. So what's so special about point C is once the interest rates rise to R3, every firm that wants to borrow or thinks they have a great investment project and needs to borrow is going to find some bank who's willing to lend to them. Okay, So there's going to be no more banks that have an incentive to keep bidding up, um, up the real interest rate. So since there's a shortage, that led to an increase in the real interest rate, which did two things. Which did, oops, let's see if I can do this a little bit easier. Which, so that led, oops, run into little problems here. Increased the real interest rate, which increased, uh, let's just do it two different ways. Which led to an increase in the real interest rate, and that led to two things. One, increased cost of borrowing, right? Because the higher the real interest rate, the more costly it is the borrowing, which decreases quantity demand. And it also did two things, which is increase the reward for savings, and as the reward for savings increases, that leads to an increase in quantity supply. And you stop when you reach equilibrium point C. All right, so that's sort of like the complete explanation of how the markets respond to, in this case, an increase in government spending. But the key thing here is, I did an example of an increase in government spending. You would get exactly the same result no matter what caused a decrease in the supply of loanable funds or no matter what caused national savings to decrease. It could be an increase in government spending, increases in taxes, increases in transfers, or maybe households decided they just wanted to spend more. It doesn't matter. This is a completely general answer that you can use to um, address any of the, the problems that we looked at. All right, so I'll probably do one more of these in my next video. But the key point here is this is how we tend to think of changes in equilibrium. It's the curve shifts if, in fact, I'll